Mustang Dave, what are you up to? Uh, taking pictures of the displays on the wall at Brock Performance. Awesome. Uncle Ben? Yes, sir. What you doing? Looking at all of Brock's pictures and work. Mm -hmm. Are you excited to be here at Brock's headquarters? So on excited. a Saturday when so, no one else is here for so this excited. private this private tour and private tour conversation. Have work done to your bike? Casey just bust this dude's ass off the line. Thanks, sir. And there he is. This is uh, Teasley. Uh, that's Teasley. That's Jeremy, and that's uh, that's my buddy Sonny. Oh, okay. That's the two bikes I was telling you about. On the left is Christine, and, and this is the stock wheelbase bike that went eight seven. You said that one's in the back. Are we going to be able to meet Christine? Uh, it's in our. It's it should. I think that bike's in the R and D room. Follow me. Oh boy. R and D room. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. Hold it. <laughs> we were just doing, uh, God, doing some type of video of. Oh, a Taiwan. 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 Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting that you guys are asking for a, you know, they've been asking for a sidewinder to build a panel so that you can know, bikes on the ground. The BMW is. The, the, the bikes are strange because the foot peg is just the, the brake setup is really really strange. So so working the stock foot peg, we came up with this arrangement, and then some of the guys will go with like a, an aftermarket rear set. Yeah. And then if that's the case, then you can just put this directly onto here and have more. Ah, oh, that's the way. Yeah. You yeah. would hang it off the mm -hmm. stock. But in order to do that, that raises the foot pegs. A lot of guys don't want to raise the foot pegs, so. so it gives them an option. I gotcha. Sweet. This is on my, I'm, I've been, I've been 875 on this bike myself. Really? 875? 875. Yep. 160. Oh, I want to go. Right at 160, I believe. Nice. Every bike, so really nice. The bike. swing arm acts as the air tank? Yes. Okay. And then we just use for the shifter, the BMW shifters are, are really nice. So we use they we use their shifter and then we just use the cylinder to lift up to uh, take the place you put. Nice. So you don't have to kill the engine right? kill some you know, it kills some solid. Nice and, and and yet again, you know, like like we were talking about, everything here is 100% bolt on. We we didn't cut a wire, we didn't grow anything. Um, we could remove everything from this bike, put it completely back to 100% stock. No one would ever know we did anything. Um, no splicing, like no, no splicing. Uh, even even the shifter, you unplug the horn. Yeah. You plug the. Uh, the plug, you plug the solenoid in. It's a real, That's real cool. simple setup. Bolt on here. Yeah. Clean all your stock. Yeah, that's so nice. I don't. We really. Um, I embrace stock engineering. I love the OEM engineering. So anytime that we can build a product that that complements that, that's what we do. Nice. We have a Honda Grom here with an extended swing arm, BST carbon fiber wheels, ready to be brocked out. Ready to do some high nines or low nines on the track. Awesome. So that's Brock's research and development room where Christine is located. A Honda Grom tricked out. Well, do you, uh, you do you want me to give you a little bit of a tour of the yes, warehouse? please. Okay. Um, so, you can see how clean we are here. We're very proud of that. Very organized. Uh, 
basically what happens when someone places an order on broxperformance.com, we have a real-time inventory system. Mm -hmm. So if it says we have it in stock, it's in stock. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we will cycle count uh, throughout the weeks and months during, uh, during the busy, busy season to make sure that our inventory is 100% correct. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when an order comes in, uh, if you place your order, it'll come in, bypasses our sales staff, comes directly to the warehouse. Uh, one, of our, one of our guys will uh, come with their handheld. It'll direct them over to this area, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll say, come to this location. Mm -hmm. scan this barcode and pick however many of let's say a, a spark slip on exhaust here this is for a Ducati scrambler mm -hmm. and pick one of these uh, they'll use the gun BAM and uh, it'll say pick one if for instance they come over and they try to pick the wrong part it'll go eh, nope do not pick this part nice. um, and that keeps our uh, that that makes sure that we don't miss ship uh, packages so uh, the, the system knows exactly how big this part, this, uh, this area is, how many it will fit, and, uh, and on the gun also it says, it says exactly how many are here so that he can, he can even take a, uh, take a visual count to make sure. Nice. Um, since we implemented this system in 2010, um, we've told our customers if it says it's in stock and it's not, we'll give you 10% off um, since we've implemented nice. that system. Uh, we've never had to give anybody uh, that 10%, and we're very, very that proud awesome. of that. So, that is awesome. Uh, if you if you look here, for instance, every single component of Brock's Performance is barcoded. Okay. Everything that comes in and out of the door is counted. So okay. If you look here, um, every single nut, bolt, washer, screw uh, component is tracked. Nice. Um, what we do, um, if the system, well, for instance, we put all of our, uh, our packages together, clutch mods, uh, suspension components, uh, they'll issue, uh, if we start getting low on inventory, we'll come over here, we'll build uh, however many components we need. We shrink wrap them here, so we, uh, nice. we nice. control the uh, we control the quality that way. Okay. If we start getting low on a component, um, the system will actually send our purchasing manager an email. Mm -hmm. And it'll say, you're getting low on this component. You need to get them on order. If it's a manufactured component, of course, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So that email would go out once we, once we reach a certain um, uh, time frame or a certain low level. It'll, it'll say, you know, we know you have to manufacture these, so you're gonna need to get to these sooner. It'll send awesome. that email out even yeah. sooner. So we don't have, a, you know, we don't run out of stock. Nice. Uh, and when you think about how many components we have, uh, we've, got, we've got over 7,500 components in, that's, in that system um, that make up our inventory, even though, you know, maybe 3,500 of them are available on the web. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty complicated, but yeah. you know, in the old days we had to remember now. You know, we, uh, it does it for us. Um, BST wheels. My uh, favorite. <laughs> when you order your wheels, you get a choice between ceramic bearings and stainless steel bearings. Yes. Well, if you can imagine, you know, 300 different wheel styles available, how many bearings there are. When the wheels come, um, they come with a ticket, and it'll say this wheel takes this bearing mm -hmm. for the front, let's say, and then the rears have different bearings, and then you also have a carrier bearing. Well, we keep all of those bearings worldwide bearings nice um, yes you can see the the plethora of wow. bearings we have wow. available uh, they're all kept here and it's the same thing if we start getting low on one particular type of bearing uh, it'll issue uh, an email so we'll get with Dave Conforti and, and get them on order nice. um, we also have individual fixtures for, to assemble the bearings they're all marked oh, nice. yeah. you know which uh, which fixture goes to which bearings, and we assemble them all here uh, on our on our table. So awesome. We pride ourselves here at Brock's. You know, a lot of fleeces will have uh, they'll sell individual components. We put packages together. We run the bikes. We use them. We race them. So so we can offer we can offer kits that 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 all go together. You know, use use this pipe. Use this uh, uh, use this power commander. Use this map. So. 
Um, but we're not, I mean, don't get me wrong, we like selling things. Um, <laughs> but, but you're not going to see a whole lot of products here that, that we just have to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, power commanders go with exhaust. Right. Sprockets go with wheels. Um, all, all of these things go together to make up a nice package so that the, the, the end user gets a true, honest result. Awesome. Thank you very much, Brock, for that tour. Your facility is very impressive. No problem. And I'm very pleased with you. Are you guys impressed? I'm very impressed. Because I certainly oh, am. Meticulous and neat. Mm hmm. Gorgeous. And <laughs> I had to train myself. Um, if I need something for the dyno, well, seems like I just come out and get it, right? Yeah, just go mm -hmm. out on the shelf and grab it. Yeah. <laughs> I mess up our inventory, I'm in trouble. So my yeah. where you know, I have to place an order for our part, our guys run it through the system, and I come and my warehouse guys hand it to me. Mm -hmm. Brock don't foul up our inventory. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. So what we're going to do here, Eve, yep. is because your because the bike doesn't have doesn't have a a map in it at 100% throttle, mm -hmm. um, we're going to map it at 100% throttle, but we're going to let we're going to let the dyno do the mapping for us. Okay. And what it's what it's going to do is um, we're going to set a target air fuel ratio here. Um, in a program that DinoJet offers called Tuning Link. And basically what it's going to do is um, we're going to set a target air fuel ratio of 12.8 to 1. And it's going to, I'm going to put the bike in fifth gear and I'll hold the throttle. And at this, if for this particular run, I'm going to hold it at 100%. Mm -hmm. And then the bike, you'll, you'll hear the bike uh, I'll set it at a target starting position at about 7,000 RPM because this is a throttle by wire bike. That's where it's going to want to start. And then you'll hear the dyno will, uh, it's got an eddy current brake on it. It will drag the bike down to 7,000 RPM and then it will let the brake go and you'll hear the bike rev from 7,000 RPM up to red line. And what it's doing is it's gradually letting the brake go letting the RPMs climb and then the sniffer probe here we're gonna uh, we're running it through the sniffer I could also put an air t uh, uh, a probe or a O2 sensor directly in the pipe we're just gonna do it with the sniffer today okay um, it'll let the bike accelerate up it'll measure the air fuel ratio as it's accelerating and then at the end of the run we'll see a graph appear on the screen where it's measuring uh, whether it's lean rich lean rich and then it'll say we've measured we've measured this ratio at this particular RPM. It's either lean or rich. Would you like me to fix the map for you? Nice. I'll say yes, and it will. And in this column, it'll just go. Bloop. That's my funny sound, and it'll <laughs> change the map. Nice. And it's done. Nice. Um, and it will it will create a map for us. Now now why that's so nice. And the difference between that and say single cell mapping through the ECU is the wear and tear on the engine. We're just going to make one run. Mm -hmm. It's going to measure it, and it's going to change it, and then it'll basically be perfect. Sometimes you have to make two runs. It depends on how uh, how how far off the map is. But on the Ninja H2s previously, like I was telling you, uh, we'll go in and we'll do that for every cell in the map so that. No matter, regardless of what throttle position you're in or what RPM you're in, 
the bike is perfectly mapped all the way through there so that it accelerates absolutely as hard as possible regardless of what throttle position and also the bike is incredibly smooth so whether you're riding on the street in traffic or accelerating coming out of a corner the bike is just liquid smooth as you come out of the corner. It's very drivable, uh, very hard accelerating. Also, we can set this target air, air fuel ratio wherever we want. If we want it to be a little on the richer side for use with race gas, um, we can do that. If we want to set it a little on the leaner side to get optimum fuel mileage, we can do that also. Um, that allows you to put in whichever, whichever map you like, or some guys will use a map switch, and they'll just switch back and forth uh, for whichever map they like. Nice. So we'll go ahead and set this up, and I'll show you how we do it. Thank you, Brock. acceleration when racing is about acceleration definitely so to obtain your hardest acceleration you want your bike to be in it's the most perfect part of the mapping all the time mm -hmm. that's what makes a bike accelerate its hardest and unfortunately yeah you're not there that's yeah. not what's that's not what's happening Go. but we'll show you I'll show you how I can fix that mm -hmm. and how we fix it at Brock's mm -hmm with Ben's bike. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. okay. So we had a fun-filled day here at Brock's Performance in Dayton, Ohio. Right. Uncle Ben's Ninja H2 produced 264 horsepower on the dyno and Mustang Dame's bike produced 276. But we discovered that Uncle Ben's bike has an issue where it's not producing power after 13.8 RPM. So uh, we have uh, some leads to go on on why we think that's happening. And we're going to get that issue addressed and resolved within the next week or two. And then we will do a follow-up dyno pull of the two bikes uh, once that's resolved. But again, Mustang Dame's bike is extremely strong at 276 horsepower at the wheel. And this bike is strong as well, even though it's not producing power after 13.8 RPM. It still produced 264 horsepower as uh, he has a Yamaha R1 here with a Brox alien head exhaust on it. Hey guys, it's getting late. I want to thank you for viewing today's video. We had an awesome time out here at Brox Performance. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share the video, and as always, you can hit the subscribe button at the very bottom left hand side of the screen. Stay tuned for more videos of these two amazing motorcycles, and as always, thanks for viewing.